Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to just look at how to use any information like this to get the integral. We're not integrating over a line. We're not doing any integration dx. As you can see, we're doing integration dA. dA means it's over an area. So if I tell you to integrate f of x dx, and I give you a to b. All I'm saying is we're going to start from a on the x-axis and move all the way to b and find the area under the curve of f of x like that. So let's say this is the graph of f of x. We're going to go from a to b and everything we get here that is the area we're looking for. That's the meaning of this integral. You can do the same thing with this, but what we have is not a function that depends only on x. It depends on x and y. So it is not just a line. It's like a flying carpet, like I have here. And whatever is under a carpet is not just an area. It is a region. I mean, I won't call it a region because that still sounds like an area. It is a volume. Okay, we got introduced to the concept of volume in calculus too. When we're doing rotation, what is the volume of this object that is generated when you rotate this? But now we're not rotating, so it makes it necessary to decide, okay, let's choose a, a rectangular area and just find what we get. And we can have patches of rectangles all fused together. So what do you do here? What we're saying is we're looking for the volume that is under the sheet here. This looks like a loaf of bread, like the kind I used to eat when I was a kid. <sighs> Remember that whenever you want to calculate volume, all you need is to find area and multiply by depth or what you call height or length. So we could as well find the area of this side and then integrate the area over this entire length, or we could find this area here and push it all the way to the other side and cover everything by integration. So, whatever you do, you have to cover both directions. And that's the point of the area. But this dA, remember I said, this is just dx. But when we have dA, so when you integrate dA, we're saying we're not just doing one, we're doing both dx and we're also doing dy. So another way to write this is to write this and write dx dy or dy dx. It doesn't matter, not, not dy over dx, okay? It's gonna be dy times dx or dx times dy not really times, but again, with the idea of area, we know we have to be multiplying x and y. So basically, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, what is this? This tells us that we are integrating over a region, and that region is described as the rectangle described as 0, 1 to 0, 3. What does that mean? It means that if you had this as your y-axis, this as your x-axis, your x is going to go, traditionally we do x before y. So this is going to be your x, it goes from 0 to 1, and your y goes from 0 to 3, from 0 to 3. So this is the region over which you are integrating. So that loaf of bread is just something here, and then you're integrating outward. Okay, and that's where you get your solid. So what other way can we write this? This can be written simply as the integral. Which one do you want to do first, x or y? By Fubini, it's a theorem that says that if the integral is a finite integral over a region, as long as it is finite, it does not matter which one you do first. Whether you do, sometimes Fubini fails, but in this case it will not fail. Okay, so here we're going to have, um, is either you do 0, 
to 1, and then you do 0 to 3. So the one that is on the inside is the one you do first. The one on the outside is the one you do last. And like we said, since 0, 3 is the one that belongs to y, we're going to write the function y e to the negative x y. And because this is y, we have to write dy first and then write dx. But Fubini says you can switch the order so that this guy that is outside, you can bring it in, but it means this guy on the outside also must come in. But you have to decide which one is better for you to take first. Because sometimes if you make the wrong choice, your life is going to be... Now, one of the biggest tricks in double integrals is you deciding and knowing which one to integrate first. So let's take a look at this integral. If I decide to integrate x first, let's see what's going to happen. Remember, if you decide to integrate x first, it means you're assuming y is a constant. So you don't need to worry yourself about what y is going to look like, okay? Because you don't need to worry about it. Now, if I decide to integrate this, remember, usually, if you had a number multiplying the exponent of e, you'll just do a u substitution. If I do a u substitution, the derivative of u will be negative y. I'm going to have y dx. I mean, I'm going to have y dx, and I have y and dx, which means looks like I can do a u substitution. But if I choose to do to integrate y first, u substitution will not help me because I have the same y as I have here. Because it's going to look like you're doing e to the e. This you cannot use u substitution for because what's here is not, this is not the derivative of this. So you have to do integration by parts. And you don't want to do integration by parts when you have u substitution as an option. So the better option in this case is to integrate x first rather than y, even though I have written dy dx. So it is smart for you to say, I'm going to be integrating x first. So bring in the x, bring in the x, and switch it by Fubini. So that means I'm going to now write the 0. I'm going to write 0, 3 on the outside. And on the inside, I have 0, 2. And I still have my function y e to the negative x, y. But now I'm going to be writing dx, dy. So let's get into it. Now, if I integrate this, I'm going to do a u substitution. OK, let's write it here. Let's put this here because I'm going to divide this board into two. So if I do a u substitution, I'm going to say let u be equal to negative x, y so that du will be equal to now I'm doing du dx, remember? So I'm going to be differentiating this with respect to x. So du dx is just du. If I differentiate this with respect to x, it's going to be negative y dx. Do not confuse yourself, <laughs> OK? It is negative y dx because we're treating y as a constant. So we're going to go back here and say the integral we have is the integral for all oh, u. By the way, we have changed u. If we have changed done a u substitution, it means we have to change the bounds also. So what we have u evaluated at 0 will be 0 times, so x is 0, that's going to be 0. And then u evaluated at 2, is it's going to be in negative 2x, negative 2y. We're going to replace this x with 2, and that's what we have. So when we write our integral, again, it's going to be from 0 to 3, but now this is going to change from 0 to negative 2y. That's what we have. And then this is going to be, oh, wait, y times dx is du. So we're going to replace y dx with du so that what is left is just e to the negative u. Oh, we say, oh, e to the u. Nice e to the u because we replace all of it with negative x, y. So it's going to be e to the u multiplied by du. So with negative y dx, there's going to be a negative. So let's leave the negative here. 
okay that's going to come from here and then we have this replace this so we have just dy du so we have du rather dy that's what we have so straight up from here, we can take the integral. If we integrate negative e to the u, what do we get? We get negative e to the u. Nothing changes. So that means we have the integral from 0 to 3 of, we now have this, negative e to the u evaluated from 0 to negative 2y, and then we have dy sitting here. All you have to do is just do some simplification. Now, watch this. If we take negative 2y and plug it in here, we're going to end up with, this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 3. If I plug in negative 2y here, I'm going to have negative e to the negative 2y minus, so it's going to be negative e to the negative 2y minus, if I plug in zero, it's going to be negative e to the zero, and negative e to the zero is negative one. So minus negative one is the same thing as plus one. Ah, and this is dy. We're almost there. What do you have to do? Just integrate. We're gonna say this is equal to the um, nothing. We just integrate. For integrate this, what do we have? We're gonna get negative e to the negative 2y divided by negative 2, this one here, plus this is going to be y, and this is now evaluated from 0 to 3. Okay, so we just need to plug in 0 and 3. Let's start with 3 first. If we plug in 3 here, we're going to have, well, this is gone, this is gone, so we have 1 half of e to the negative 6. Nice plus this is going to be you oh just three nice minus we're going to plug in zero here if we plug in zero here we're going to have negative oh this negative is gone cancelled out so i'm going to just change them to plus so i don't get confused now if you plug in zero here we have e to the zero is one one over two is just one half okay plus this is zero okay so looking at the way things are this is going to be 3 minus 1 half. That gives me 5 halves. It's going to be 5 over 2. And then I have this guy. Oh, plus e to the negative 6 over 2. Looks like I can factor out the 1 half. Okay, so my answer will be 1 over 2 of 5 plus e. To the negative six. <sighs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye bye.